Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 9th, 2024. Well, yesterday we had quite the volatility and then really extremely low um, volume in the market as our market breadth continues to be extremely lacking, very anemic here overall. Let's take a look at what happened overnight. First off, if we take a look at Asian markets, Asian markets were mostly higher last night, only Hong Kong just slightly lower. And as a matter of fact, Japan made new record highs. Even though their economic situation and their currency is really um, being hit hard, they are pushing their index is really, really high. Uh, the Nikkei right now is at 41,580. Um, so just, just the Hong Kong, uh, just a tiny bit lower last night. If we look at European markets here this morning, European markets right now are mostly lower across the board. A little concern over there in France as uh, worried about the gridlock um, now that they have created in the election. A little bit of worry there. And the FTSE and DAX are also just a little bit lower here today. Right now, uh, futures this morning are pushing higher here in the United States. We've got the NASDAQ futures up um, not quite half a percent, continuing to push and try and set new record highs ahead of some comments from Jerome Powell today in Congress. Let's take a look at our um, um, oil prices here this morning. Oil prices are a little bit lower. We've got oil down 39 cents and Brent crude is down 35 cents. Natural gas is also down, not quite a penny. Um, looking at our bonds this morning, our bonds, well, they're inching higher. The two-year bond is at 4.63%, the tens are at 4.29%, and the 30s at 4.74%. My guess is, as a worry about what Jerome might say, and um, that concern that he's not going to be as dovish as the market really wants him to be. If we take a look at gold this morning, gold is bouncing back up. Gold had a really rough day yesterday, um, sharply lower. And you can see this morning trying to bounce just a little tiny bit. We've got silver, copper, platinum, and palladium all responding higher today after some selling yesterday. And um, one of the reasons, as you can see, we've got quite a little bit of volatility in the US dollar here this morning but it is trying to go just a little bit higher here at the moment. So keep an eye on that today. This might actually be a bad tick in the uh, charting software here as well. So watch that close. Um, so what does all that mean for the day? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I apologize there will not be a blog again today. My back is still giving me fits. I just, um, when I do these morning preps, um, I, I start at 5 a.m. And if everything goes great, I can get it all done. Um, it took me so long just to just to get dressed today. There's no way I can get the blog out in time. So I do apologize for that. Um, kind of struggling here with this silly back. Let's take a look at the diamonds. Um, as you can see, diamonds had a really good start to the day yesterday, surging up over 200 points and then fading all the way back, filling the gap and leaving behind kind of a shooting star pattern. Now that shooting star pattern, as I explained to the folks in RWO yesterday, really won't matter or it won't mean anything at all unless there's follow through to the downside. If we were to follow through down like this today, 
that of course would raise some concern in the market. But if there is no follow through and what we're seeing at the least at the pre-market, no follow through to the downside. So if those bulls can find that inspiration today uh, to push on through and we can pop up through that resistance in the chart, well, the next area we're gonna have to test, we've gotta see if we can start taking out these wicks in the chart and then we're going to push back up here and see if we can deal with this big black candle that continues to be a um, little bit of a downer here for the Dow. If they can break through there, of course, right into here, then above that area, we start looking at attacking um, the Dow highs and then blue sky above that in the chart. One of the things you do want to make note of is that we do have this upside trend here trying to hold in on that chart. So every reason to believe that um, we can hold this unless something um, really brings out those bears. Now, if the bears do come out, well, you can see that possibility of pushing back into maybe some of these support, a little tiny support right in there, pushing into that area, maybe testing this little upside trend and then, of course, this support here would be pretty critical. A failure there would likely raise some concern in the market. So watch carefully for that. Beyond that point, you know, we're really looking at levels that drop us pretty substantially here in the diamonds. It is worth noting that the diamond's still holding above its 50-day moving average. So if we were to pull back and break down below this area, you can see that's where I, I mentioned that that would raise some concern here in the Dow. If we take a look at our SPY, boy, there's no fear here at the moment. Um, as long as we continue to buy up those big tech giants, we seem to have no problem in continuing to push the SPY higher and higher. So new record highs yesterday, new record highs potentially at the open this morning. Any, um, any bullish inspiration here, we just, all we've got is blue sky above, so no resistance up there. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration, then start looking for those pullbacks to occur where we can start coming back down progressively through this move to test and see if we can hold trend and hold support. But right now there is nothing in here suggesting that that is going to be the case. But if those bears were to really get going, dropping below here is where there would be some major concerns starting to come into the market and maybe a reversal or even a correction beginning if that were to start. If we take a look at the QQQ, QQQ also extremely bullish. Just, um, you know, we're, we're very thin, um, a, a very thin leadership in the NASDAQ with those tech giants, but they keep ripping to the upside. So um, if you want to make some money um, in the queues, you need to be in about seven different companies. Uh, the rest of the companies are languishing and not doing all that well. Um, blue sky above if those bulls find inspiration probably a new record high at the open if things stay the same this morning and if we start pulling back we'll just start watching these levels as we start pushing down here in the chart to um, come back and maybe test the trend breaking that trend of course like i said that's where some concern would come in to the market and maybe a little bit of worry. One thing we will want to uh, make note of is we are extremely extended away from the 50 day moving average in the QQQ and the SPY. So remember um, what goes up often comes down and when it comes down, it usually comes down ugly. So be prepared, um, don't get um, into this idea the market can never come down. It's usually when it does. When we take a look at IWM, IWM continues to be the weakest of the indexes. You can see we had this, let me pull this back a little bit further, this downtrend in here, but we've not been able to get really up there to test that area for a while. We have another downtrend going on here in the chart. So if the bulls can find inspiration, we need to see a break of this area, break up through, break through this resistance here in the chart, 
and then maybe we can start making our way up to test this resistance uh, downtrend in that area. Breaking through there, of course, would really change things quite a bit if we could break through and prove to hold. Moving back up here for another retest of this really big area of price resistance here in the Russell. Now, remember, the Russell doesn't have the advantage of any of the big tech giants in there, so it makes it struggle a lot in here. If we were to push back, if the bears were to find inspiration, well, I would suggest this area here is a little bit of a price support. You can see we've got that little upside trend right in there, so we got that double whammy of price support. Failure through there, however, might raise some concern in the Russell, raise a little bit of fear, and we would start progressively moving down to test some of these low areas in the chart. Let's take a look at our VIX. Looking at our VIX yesterday, our VIX rallied while we were going up yesterday in the market, and then as we were pulling back, the VIX faded. Go figure. But what we have going on here in the VIX is we have a continuation of this downtrending move with a very flat bottom um, on that move. If the bulls continue to find inspiration, I still look for that possibility if the bulls can get going that we would break these lows, continue to push on down in what I would consider to be a pretty extreme complacency situation here in the market. Um, if the bears get going, um, remember, it's not a break of that downtrend that's going to matter. Um, the break of the downtrend is one thing that will bring a little fear in, but a break of the downtrend that holds a higher low, that's where the concern would come in the market. And so far, no signs of that here in the VIX. We're not fearful at all. As long as we can keep the, some of those tech giants going, we're pretty happy. If we take a look at our uh, T2122, our T2122, as you can see here, we ended up pulling back. At one point in the day, when the Dow was up uh, you know, 200 points in the morning, we were pushing up here past 70%. And then that fade back brought us right back down for the close, down below 50%. So we got about half the stocks moving up, half the stocks moving down um, here in the market, and a lot of uncertainty in this chart. And again, I do want to remind everyone that we're in that blackout period, that blackout period where corporates aren't able to do their buybacks, they're not able to move that stock at all. So that's creating um, a lot of this uncertainty and it's pretty normal. Remember we have the big bank earnings reports that will begin on Friday and of course a CPI number on Thursday and a PPI number on Friday. But once we start hitting those inspiration points of those earnings, maybe we'll start getting some of that breadth back here in the market. It'll take a little bit of uh, time, but watch that carefully. So we're about equal opportunity to the upside or downside today, depending on um, who finds the inspiration here in the market. If we take a look at our T2108, our T2108, well, as you can see, not all that inspiring here. We did push up a little bit. We're still stuck in this support and resistance zone here in the chart. 35, 36% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. Hardly a um, uh, an indication of uber bullishness that you might get a feeling by looking at the SPY and the QQQ. The majority of the stocks are still languishing. Um, not moving and this is one of the problems that I'm seeing a lot of people struggling with is they're buying really good trade setups and there's a um, good trade setups that occurred yesterday the problem is they're not following through because we don't have enough momentum or breadth of the market to help them follow through I wouldn't say all of them but quite a few of them are struggling to follow through so be really careful here guys with over trading pretty perfectly fine to trade just make sure that you plan enough time in those positions be willing to take the stops if the reversal occurs but don't over trade this market because we're just not getting um, that breadth or momentum to really keep things going unless you talk about seven specific socks in the market 
we take a look at our T2107, uh, same thing is true here, T2107 started moving up yesterday, ended up finishing pretty close to flat, as you can see, directly at 50% of the stocks right at the close of yesterday, holding above their 200-day moving average, 50% of the stocks are below their 200-day moving average. So once again, not a bastion of bullishness here in the market. And the culprit here is really the market breadth. Um, breadth of the market continues to be remarkably weak. And, and I want you to note, know that we can go lower. We have seen lower here before. So as we run toward that uncertainty of the CPI number, it's entirely possible we could see breadth continue to shrink here with that uncertainty. So once again, just that reminder to be careful and not over trade this market, probably lacking in that momentum to follow through on even great entry signals. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar, or excuse me, our economic calendar here today. And our inspiration point is most likely going to be right here. Jerome Powell speaking in Congress. Um, he'll be over here on Wednesday as well doing a repeat. You'll want to keep, um, keep that in mind. Of course, today is going to be the most important in that congressional testimony. Um, other than that, we've got Barr speaking. We've got a small business optimism um, report coming out. We've got some um, bond auctions and then Bauman here um, at 1.30 um, in the afternoon. Looking forward again, we've got mortgage applications, some more Powell comments, wholesale inventories, a natural gas report, I mean, um, petroleum status report. We've got um, bill auction, um, a 10-year note auction, and several Fed speakers here. Um, tomorrow to be thinking about. Um, let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. And our earnings calendar is going to be really light, um, everyone, um, quite light. If we take a look, um, we have only one notable this morning, um, Helen of Troy. Um, looks like Helen of Troy, um, um, after reporting, uh, feeling a little bit of pressure and pain here in the pre-market, um, so, uh, keep them, keep that one in mind. And then this afternoon we've got, um, SGH as the only notable that I could really come up with for today, um, after the bell. We pick up with just a few more on Wednesday, um, in those earnings reports, but remember, um, everyone's going to be focused in to the end of the week when we start getting those big bank reports. So lots of just uncertainty here in the market and certainly understandable. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you guys could do me this big favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, you do me that favor. Click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue continue to grow. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. And um, thank you all very, very much. Let's take a look at uh, some of these stocks. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell anything. You need to follow your trading rules and your guidelines. These are just some ideas and you should never, ever blindly follow anyone else's ideas without your own due diligence, making sure you're following your rules, your risk tolerances for a trade. Now, first off, let's take a look at the financials here in the market. Financials also tried to get going yesterday, ended up pushing back. There's that anticipation of these big bank reports. 
um, trying to move this higher. So it's possible these could continue to try and stretch up, but I think there's also a pretty strong uncertainty about how well these banks are going to perform considering um, the current economic situation out there. So watch these closely here. Be kind of careful of chasing things like Goldman Sachs though, really looking good and, and tried to make new record highs yesterday and then ended up pulling back with the shooting star. JP Morgan um, setting up in a bullish pattern, uh, Bank of America in a very bullish pattern as well. So keep an eye on those. They're trying really, really hard to stay bullish, but that uncertainty of those earnings could be um, a little bit of danger there in those charts. Let's take a look at um, oil. When we look at the oil sector here, um, we're seeing a lot of confusing signals here. Some stocks are doing well, some not so good. You can see stocks like uh, Valero. Valero, uh, whoops, let's get Valero there. Valero really breaking down here. First, we broke through to the upside. And this is one of those patterns, guys, that I really like to caution everyone on. We, we have been trained in this market. If something moves, jump on it and chase it. But here's an example of one of those where we break out and we cannot hold a higher low in that trade. And so you jump in that trade and you get whipsawed out with another stop loss in your account. Try to avoid those trades. What we need to see, what we want to see in every price pattern is when we break a downtrend of some kind, make it hold show those higher lows starting to come in make those patterns develop here to show you trend unfortunately a lot of things in that oil sector um, have disappointed here where we broke out and so far haven't been able to prove a higher low in those charts so just be really really careful with some of these stocks um, it is possible they could continue to swing lower they could finally find some support in here and bounce higher make sure you make that chart um, prove to you that it can hold trends and this is one of those problems of that uh, of a market with a lack of momentum or enthusiasm here um, in the market so keep an eye on those if we take a look at some other areas here crm you guys know i was calling crm here this was the alert the breakout i said watch for a gap fill we got that gap filled and now we're resting back here toward that trend in the chart if we can hold this price support and hold that trend come back into here i would look for that next opportunity to test that um, resistance area and see if we can break through i can tell you it's a pretty strong resistance area so we're going to need some kind of inspiration in the market maybe to get things going we might need a little bit more breadth in the market to get it going but that would be one to be paying attention to of course i've been talking about this net app for a long time um, here's a great example of a stock just unable to follow through. We're just not getting enough market breadth here or that enthusiasm to move us on through. And you can see we did pop my alert here and it's really not going anywhere. Tried yesterday once again, ended up fading back. But if you're still interested in this chart, I think watching this area in here for that opportunity that may pop, certainly is worth doing and if you're holding this stock i wouldn't be changing anything i would stay with that stock it might be a little bit frustrating but hanging in there on some of the retail sides of things um, i had mentioned walmart and costco after that big surge on friday they're resting back here just a little bit consolidating but there's nothing in that chart that's bearish staying very very bullish if we can hold in there maybe come back into this trend area of the chart look for that next opportunity to the upside i'm going to say the same on costco let that consolidate and rest in here that opportunity to move up on the big tech side amd um, really kind of surprised me in this surge to the upside so now that we've broken the downtrend here again we're getting we're, we have a willingness in this market to chase anything that's moving to chase be really really careful here guys this is a big shot to the move to the upside 
we're coming into resistance into that chart. Don't chase it here. If it can rest, consolidate, hold this higher low and move on higher or even pull back and hold this upside trend breakout, then you've got an entry with a lower risk in that trade. Wait for that pattern to develop. Don't chase this thing to the upside in case it has that really quick whipsaw reversal um, in the market. Taking a look at other big techs in here, there's nothing about Microsoft that you can't like. It is almost on a parabolic look as it continues to stretch to the upside, making new highs. There doesn't seem to be any price people aren't willing to pay for uh, tech um, as long as they continue to mention AI. So keep an eye on Microsoft, keep an eye on Google, Google looking very, very good. Meta had kind of a rough day yesterday, pulling back after making a new record high, but you'll notice right in here, this pullback coming back into here, so into some price support. So if this can hold in that area, come on back to trend, I think there's every reason to believe that could continue on higher here in the market. But once again, you've got to be very centric into these big tech giants to find much love at all uh, for trades. Stocks like um, Pan W, Pan W, very, very bullish pattern in here. Nice little resting consolidation hammered yesterday. Um, in that chart, if they can find that bullish inspiration here, look for that opportunity for Palo Alto to maybe push through to the upside. Keep a close eye on these precious metals as well. Um, a lot of volatility in this, a lot of uncertainty um, in the market, but gold has been holding up pretty well. It was a rough day yes yesterday. Pardon me for the yawn. Um, Watch that carefully here. If um, the bulls can find some inspiration off this trend, that opportunity that we could shoot up. But barring just the actual precious metal, take a look at the miners. Uh, GDX, GDX looking really good in here, holding, showing bullishness. The junior miners also looking good, holding in there, showing bullishness. And you can look at individuals out there like uh, Newmont holding into bullish patterns. Um, we could take a look at some copper in here, FCX, trying to break that downtrend, hold that higher low in here. Keep an eye on that. Obviously, it's got to deal with that resistance. Uh, aluminum is even making that move in this upside trend. Resting pattern out here toward that trend, and I would look for that next opportunity to the upside on those precious metals. And that's particularly going to be the case if the dollar continues this little weakening that started to happen last week and starting to pull back. If that weakening in the dollar continues, watch for those commodity prices to move higher. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for all the kind words of encouragement um, on my back. Dug on it. Um, makes me feel like a really old man, but um, I'll get through it. Thank you um, for um, kind support to the effort of putting these videos out. I really appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful Tuesday. And I will see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Wish you all the very, very best.